name is Holly Brooks, and welcome to Mid-City Erectors. Mid-City Erectors was founded by my dad, Scott Brooks, in 2000 with six iron workers and a few welders. Today we have over 100 employees, five mobile cranes, trucks, numerous welders, and other heavy equipment. Mid-City Erectors has seen a steady increase and is now one of the largest steel erectors in the United States, with sales in 2005 just under $10 million, with a projected increase for 2006 and 2007. But what is tilt wall and steel erection? Come with me and we'll take a look. This is James Whitley. Mr. Whitley receives requests from builders and other steel companies for us to get on their jobs. How does that work? We receive invitations to bid jobs off the internet, for the most part. Uh, sometimes we get phone calls just asking us where to send the drawings to. Uh, from the internet, we'll, they'll download a link where we can download the drawings off the internet and print them here. Either that or they'll send us a hard copy, which is the paper copy through the mail. Or they'll send us a CD that we can print the drawings off of here. From that, we'll print them out. Then we go through the job, seeing what all has to be done, take off all the parts and pieces, and figure out how much labor it takes, how much manpower, what kind of equipment, how much equipment it takes to do it. And we'll put a bid together and send it to the customer. We, if we're low bid on it or if they want us to do it, then we'll receive a contract to do that. <clears throat> Once we get the contract on the job, then we have to write up a work order on it, make a file as to what it is, who we're doing work for, uh, where the job's at, what all's involved in it. Uh, we have to arrange to have all our insurance sent to the customer. Once we do that, then we have, <clears throat> if it's a till wall panel job, we go through on AutoCAD and we make a drawing of the, of the foundation layout, make a drawing of all the pieces for the panels, the size of them, the height of them, and we'll make a drawing of showing where these panels need to be laid out to where we can reach them with the crane. It's the most economical way for us to set them. Are these some of the plans right here? This is some of the plans. Like I say, this is a warehouse we're bidding. This one is a panel drawing that we did for a JC Penny stores. We draw out the foundation, we draw all the panels in there and then place them on the drawing where they need to be cast, where the concrete guy will know where to put them when he, when he pours the panels. The till wall panel is poured on site. They form it out of wood, and the forms for it. They put the rebar in, the, in there and pour the concrete to make the wall panel. Then we'll go out and we'll stand that wall panel up and make the walls out of it. What happens after that? After that, uh, we, we get the job, uh, we have to set it up for what crew's going to run it, the foreman's going to be involved, uh, Doug Greathouse is our safety director, he gets involved in it, meets with the customer, we have a pre-construction meeting with the customer, get everything set up as far as uh, how we're going to approach the job, get the drawing to them for the panel layout if it's got the wall panels on it where they can give that to their concrete subcontractor and he'll know how to do the work. What are some of the buildings that we've built? Okay, uh, we built the hospital in Decatur that I mentioned before that we looked at the picture. We built the stadium in uh, Denton, the large football stadium that they built two or three years ago, we built that. We built Hobby Lobby stores all over the United States. Uh, we built the J.C. Penny stores, we built uh, coal stores, the coal department stores, we built a lot of those. Uh, we built some retail grocery stores, uh, warehouses that we mentioned before, uh, schools and some churches. But uh, a, lot of, a lot of variety of jobs. Well, let's see how these plans look in real life. The concrete workers begin by pouring a casting bed, or slab, which gives them a smooth surface to work with. After it dries, they spray it with a bond breaker. This is like spraying cooking oil in a pan, which will keep the wall from sticking to the slab. This is the darker concrete you see in the form. Next, they build forms for the windows and doors and put in the reinforcement steel to make the wall stronger. Then they pour in the concrete and smooth it out. On this job, they are using a pump truck with a remote controlled boom to make the job go a lot faster. For all you RC buffs, this is probably one of the most expensive remote control cars you will ever see, at a whopping $600,000. These are steel embeds. Once the concrete is smoothed out, 
These are placed in the wall so we have something to weld to. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to put the building together. In a week or two, depending on the weather, the walls will be ready for us to lift. But don't take my word for it. Here's the man that really knows how it's done. Today I'm here with my dad, Scott Brooks, on a job site. Explain what we're looking at on this job site. What we've got here is uh, the panels that y'all seen earlier are being poured. And they've cured, they've taken all the form work off of the, the panels, and now we're ready to, uh, we've moved in here and we've prepped the panels, we've added uh, the braces, we've added the angle for the roof ledger, and the next step in this process is to move in here with a crane and start picking these panels up and making them into walls. How much do these weigh? Well, each one's different weight. Uh, concrete weight's 150 pounds a square foot, so these typical wall we're looking at here is like 75,000 pounds. We have some on this site uh, down here to the back side of me. That's 118,000 pounds, so they're really, rather large. How do we pick these up? On these, each one of these panels is a, uh, a group of lifting inserts. It looks like a nail, just a, a large nail. And we, we hook a collapse to these and pick it. There'll be eight on this particular panel, and we pick this panel up. Each one of these is good for about 15,000 pounds. What size crane does it take to do this? This building here takes a 250 ton crane uh, because of the size of the panels and the radius that we had to set it from. Uh, so if the smallest panel is 20,000 pounds and the largest panel is 120,000 pounds, you bring a crane in large enough to set the 120,000 pound panel and then use it for setting the rest. You've done a bunch of welding, why? The, weld, the angle clips that are welded here are the joist seats. This is what the steel for the roof bears on, and it ties the roof structure into the tilt wall panel, which helps support the wall after the braces come off. Everything that we do on the ground saves us from having to do the work in the air or out of lifts. So this is a time-consuming, uh, a time-saving effort here that we put in while the panel's laying in the prone position. So it's off to another job site to see how this works. Here our employees are attaching lifting lugs to a panel for the crane to lift. This is my dad's 250 ton link belt crane. It is the second largest crane of its type in the world. While picking up the panel, all employees help position the wall in its final placement. Temporary pipe braces are used to secure the walls in place. These braces are anchored in the floor and the panel to keep it from falling over. When everything is safe, the lifting lugs are released from the panel and it's time to get another wall. So what about structural steel? Let's take a look at one of our job sites in Oklahoma. This is the distribution warehouse for wholesale foods that covers a million square feet. That's 23 acres under one roof. Here the men are building a bay of steel on the ground. This helps save time and money. It also keeps our employees much safer by keeping them on the ground as much as possible. When above the ground, Mid-City Erectors tries to work from aerial lifts whenever possible, rather than having our employees walk on the steel. This is one more way we keep our employees safe. When the men are finished, we lift the bay with the crane and set it in place. Okay, let's watch that again and see how fast they can go against the clock. Alright, maybe I sped it up just a bit, but these guys are really good at what they do. Well, that's pretty much it. The next time you're at a shopping center, office building, mall, school, hospital, church, or stadium, there's a pretty good chance we were there first. Mid-City Erectors, setting the industry standard in structural steel and tow wall erection. <laughs>